Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick bite-sized concepts in medicine for study and rapid review. This video is on the loop of Henle with regard to solute transport. For my video on the countercurrent mechanism, you can check the link in the description box below. The kidney has millions of nephrons, and each nephron has a glomerulus and a renal tubule. The first part of the renal tubule is the proximal convoluted tubule, which then leads into the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule, and finally the collecting duct. The loop of Henle has a thin descending limb, a thin ascending limb, and a thick ascending limb. The thin and thick are related to the thickness of the epithelium rather than the diameter, thinner versus thicker epithelium. The thin portion has no brush border, lesser mitochondria because it has lesser metabolic activity, it's mainly involved in simple diffusion of water. The thick limb, on the other hand, is more like the proximal convoluted tubule. It has active reabsorptive functions, so it's got thicker epithelial cells. First, let's look at the descending limb. This portion is highly permeable to water, but is less permeable to other solutes. So its main function is reabsorption of water by simple diffusion. The loop of Henle is in the medulla, and the medulla is hypertonic, and urine coming from the PCT was isoosmotic. Because of the cortico-medullary osmotic gradient, here the fluid inside the loop has lesser tonicity than the medulla, so that encourages water to leave the nephron and get reabsorbed. So this segment concentrates urine, hence it's called the concentrating segment. The ascending segment is impermeable to water, so it's opposite to the descending limb. Both the thick and the thin portions are impermeable to water. The thick ascending limb is more important than the thin portion. It has a thick epithelium with a sodium-potassium-2 chloride co-transporter on the luminal membrane. That's the NKCC2, which brings one sodium, one potassium, and two chloride molecules into the cell. Where does it get its energy from? Similar to the PCT, the sodium-potassium ATPase on the basolateral membrane, which takes sodium out of the cell, creating a concentration gradient, which brings sodium in from the opposite side, and the energy generated brings potassium and 2-chloride along with it. 10-20% to 20 of sodium is reabsorbed here, versus 65% in the PCT. So potassium and chloride are entering the cell against a concentration gradient. So they passively exit the cell along the concentration gradient from high to low. A slight back leak of potassium creates enough positive potential in the tubular lumen to transport other positive ions like magnesium and calcium paracellularly, which means between the cells, into the interstitium. 50% of calcium also gets transported transcellularly, which means through the cell, by a concentration gradient. Once it gets into the cell, it enters the interstitium by the calcium ATPase and also in exchange for sodium. This transcellular route is stimulated by parathormone, so it increases calcium reabsorption. There's also a sodium-hydrogen exchanger, the thick ascending limb has the sodium-hydrogen countertransport, so it mediates sodium reabsorption and hydrogen secretion, contributing to acidification of urine. So like I said, this portion of the nephron is impermeable to water. So the whole time, it's only solutes that are getting reabsorbed, which means the urine is getting less concentrated and more dilute as it goes up towards the distal convoluted tubule. The most important function of the loop of Henle is the countercurrent multiplier system. Its main function is to concentrate urine. Make sure to check out my video on the countercurrent multiplier. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.